Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am here with another Android TV box. Now this is new to me, but it's been on the market for a little while. This is the Razer Forge Android TV. A lot of people complained about this device when it came out. It won like best of CES 2015 and I really wanted to get a hold of one, but I never got the chance to get one. I ordered this a few weeks ago on eBay and it finally shipped in. I got it for $70 ship did come with all the accessories and the servo controller. Now this one is a bit scratched up because it is used, but it works very, very well. This thing runs a Snapdragon 805 CPU clocked in at 2.5 gigahertz. It runs an Arduino 420 GPU. I believe it's clocked up to 600 megahertz. Now this is an older CPU that was used in a lot of uh, flagship phones back in the day. It still holds its own at 1080p. This is not a 4K box. I'm not worried about 4K right now. I don't own a 4K television or anything. So 1080p is fine for me. I have messed with this for about an hour. And I gotta say, this thing is snappy. And I guarantee it will destroy any Chinese Amlogic box on the market right now. Be it the S905, the S905X, or the S912. So around back here, these are the only ports on the unit. We have a USB 3.0 port, Ethernet, HDMI, and our power in, which is a barrel jack. On the front here, we do get a nice green light when it comes on, and I will show you guys a picture of that when it's on. But I'm really enjoying this little box here, and for the price, I couldn't beat it. You can pick these up refurbished on eBay with the controller for $99. This was a used deal here that I got a hold of. I'm glad that he finally shipped it out. He actually refunded me $10, so I got it for $60 altogether. Shipped to the door. Let's take a look at the controller and the other accessories that came with it. So here's the controller it comes with. Now if you buy one of these new, it's $149 to get the controller also. This is the Razer Serval Bluetooth controller. It works really well. The analog sticks feel great. The D-pad is amazing. The buttons here, feel very mushy, like, um, it's like a little dip switch inside of there. I mean, it, it feels very, and if you could hear this, it just feels cheap there, but the triggers are really nice. It does work. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The buttons work great, uh, very responsive. They just feel a little off to me. Next up, it only came with the power adapter here, which is a 2.5 amp barrel jack. And it does unplug, so you can plug it into another PSU if you ever need to. And if you guys watch my videos, you know I am a sucker for really good micro USB cables because I do a lot of work with single board computers. This is a very nice cable here. It's um, fabric here. It's gold plated. I know the gold plate doesn't help any, but it does make it look pretty good. This will carry 2.5 amps, and I've tested it with my Raspberry Pi. It works really good. Very high quality cable that came with this. It is made by Razer. So what I'm gonna do is boot this up. I'm gonna install some applications. We're gonna run some benchmarks on it and just take a look at the hardware. I wanna see if this thing will stomp out those Chinese boxes, and I'm pretty sure it's going to. I've messed with it for a little while, and it feels a lot more snappy. It does run full-blown Android TV, and I have updated it to Android TV 6.0.1. Let's get into it, run a few benchmarks. We're gonna run Antutu, 3D Mark, and GFX Benchmark. All right, guys, so I got the Forge booted up. As you can see, I've downloaded and installed a crap ton of applications. Like I said before, I have messed with this just a little bit, and I gotta say, I really enjoy this box for the price I got it for. On the US eBay store, there is a seller right now. Now, I'm not affiliated with him at all. Not one bit. I bought this used from an independent seller. But he's been selling these boxes refurbished for 99 bucks, And it's worth it. I mean, it definitely is. You can get the Chinese boxes for uh, 34 bucks, $30 shipped. But the extra price on this, up to 99 you get the controller. And just a much smoother interface. And a more powerful unit. Let's get into it. We're going to check IDA64. And I do have a mouse connected to this unit. I actually have a four port USB hub connected with a 64 gigabyte USB stick. 
The problem is I cannot access that external storage from within apps unless I root this unit. That's the only problem I found so far, the only drawback. But there is a way to root this and I'm gonna go through that later on in a video. Device type, TV, Razer Forge, two gigabytes of RAM, available memory right now, 1,149 megabytes. It does come with a built-in 16 gigabyte storage unit. You only get 12.36 gigabytes free because the OS is taking up the rest and I've installed a ton of apps and I only have five gigs free. The CPU side, we have the Snapdragon 805 at 2.5 gigahertz. Quad core, two megs of L2 cache. This thing is very smooth because of this Snapdragon. Now, Qualcomm is one of the best ARM CPU manufacturers in the world right now. And this 805 is older, but it does a great job at 1080p. For the GPU, we have the Arduino 420. It's clocked at 300 megahertz right now, but it does go on up to 600 megahertz. It has OpenGL 3.1, which is a big plus with these Android boxes. For network, now I'm not gonna go there because it'll show my IP and all this good stuff. We'll exit this app here. But I am connected to my 5G network, so it does have 802.11 uh, AC, BG and N. Really nice feature there. First up, we're gonna run 3D Mark. I'm gonna fast forward all this for you. One thing I did notice is I cannot run Ice Storm Extreme. I'll show you in a second as soon as this boots up here. So if I try to swipe over, like if I scroll down, it says swipe for more tests, it freezes up. So I'm only able to install Slingshot. If I run Slingshot 3.1, we're gonna be running at 1440p. And I don't wanna do that because this is a 1080 box. So I'm gonna be running Slingshot ES 3.0. I will pull up their webpage and see where we're at with the score. We're gonna test it against like the Nvidia Shield and other devices. See where it is on the scale. I'm just gonna run Slingshot. I will fast forward this for you guys. So we scored a 1,807. Graphics score was 2,141, physics 1169. 12.5 frames per second in the graphics test one. Now I've tested a lot of Chinese boxes with the AmLogic. This scores way above it with the slingshot test. All right guys, so I was unable to enter the browser because it keeps crashing when I swipe over on the Forge TV, but we scored a 1,807. Here's the benchmark browser here. We're at slingshot. The Nvidia Shield TV scores a 4,831. Pretty crazy score compared to what we have. The S7 runs the Snapdragon 820 and it scores a 3,364. If we could get one of these little Android boxes with a Snapdragon 820 or the 821 that's come out recently, we'd be on track for some really, really good performance. This is probably gonna be the same as like the S5 Plus or something like that. I believe it ran the Snapdragon 805 also. And yeah, we're a little higher than that and it did run the 805. Amazon Fire HDX 8.9. We're right there with the Amazon Fire HDX. Has the same CPU. Even the Snapdragon 810 didn't score much higher than the 805. The 820 and 821 is where it's at right now. Really not that bad. If you can pick one up for 100 bucks, it'll definitely be worth it. Okay, so that was 3D Mark. Next up, we're gonna run Antutu. We'll just run the test. Okay, so we scored a 73,335. Really impressive for this little box here. I know it's not top of the line like the Nvidia Shield or anything. This is half price if you get it from uh, eBay. I got mine for 60 bucks. Can't beat this score here. The AmLogic S905, S905X, and S912 score anywhere from 30,000 to 40,000. We almost doubled the score of those little tiny Android boxes. This thing's well worth the money in my opinion. I'm gonna go back. We're gonna see where we are in the rankings here. So the iPhone 7 Plus scores a 172,644. 
very, very awesome. I still have my iPhone 6S and I love it. Let's scroll down to see where the Razer Forge is. 73,335. Above the LG V10, above the A9, right below the Mi Max, and below the Nexus 6. Not bad at all. So yeah, I was actually expecting around a forty to 50,000 score on this box. This is totally stock. Um, I don't have any cooling or anything on this box here. It scored pretty decent in my opinion. So I got one more benchmark here. We're going to run GFX Bench. This is a very, very GPU intensive test here. We'll be able to compare it against like the NVIDIA Shield TV. We'll just run them all. All right, so we're finished with GFX Bench. Man, that took a long time. I forgot how long it takes to run that benchmark. But as you can see, we have some, I mean, decent scores. They're not that bad for the hardware we're running here. Let's go to compare. For Car Chase, our best score was 536.3. The NVIDIA Shield Android TV scores a 1,628. Now, I have always recommended the NVIDIA Shield Android TV to all of my viewers. It's 199 for the 16 gigabyte version, and it'll pretty much run anything you throw at it. It's the best Android TV on the market right now. Very awesome device. So I did get this on eBay for $60 ship. You can get them for 99 bucks, the Forge TV. Not a bad deal at all for what it's scoring here. Let's scroll down and see what we compare with. Oh, we compare with the Razer Forge TV. No, that's our device there. So HTC 10, right below it, Panasonic FZ-A2A, the tough pad. Uh, right above it is the HTC 1M9. For the older Snapdragon 805, not bad at all. Go to info here, you can see quad core 2.4. It's right at 2.5 gigahertz. It's the Snapdragon 805. So I'm loving this device right now. I just want to give you guys a sneak peek real quick at some Moopin 64 or a Nintendo 64 emulation. Conquers Bad Fur Day. At the bottom there we have our frames per second. Very cool. I'm using the Glide 64 core here. And emulation on Conkers is really good compared to a lot of other devices I have tested this game on. And if you're into any Android N64 emulation, you know how hard this game is to run on different devices. And I'm dead. Just a quick sneak peek there. I'll be doing a lot of videos on this little box. So overall, first impressions, I'm really liking the Razer Forge. Now, it got a lot of hate when it came out. Maybe it was the older version of the Android system that sucked, but this newer Marshmallow 6.0.1 is not bad at all. It definitely stomps out those Chinese boxes, hands down, all day long. Really good performance out of everything that I've tested. A lot of people were complaining about not being able to get Netflix. Now, I couldn't find it on the Google Play Store, but you can sideload the Android TV version very, very easily, and it works flawlessly. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. I got a lot more coming on this box. We're going to be testing tons of emulators, tons of native Android apps, video playback, everything like that. If you want to see something, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.